uh, Petrum Vaisanshi is a sister class of uh, Austriaco terms, which was extinct, which we have already discussed in uh, earlier lecture. So today we are going to talk about Petrum Vaisanshiya and the class specific animal is lamprey. Lampreys are eel-like animals, here you see in this figure. They look like eels, or elongated eel-like bodies, and uh, they are present today and uh, they have some, some, some medical importance and ecological importance as well. So the animal is very simple in its structure, that its skeleton is made up of uh, cartilage and that cartilage too is in the form of the fibers or fibrous skeleton, right? It's not the solid masses or, or the uh, long uh, patches of, the, of uh, cartilage, but they are in the form of the small strings or the fibers which are attached together to provide the skeletal support. If we see the skin, it is uh, quite simple, plain, slimy. There is no scale present, neither there is any bony structure present on their uh, outer surface. Right? So they're completely unprotected animals and have a simple muscular two-chambered heart. So their circulatory system would be simple. There would be a single circulation of the blood. Right? We'll discuss that in the topic when we see their circulatory system. Uh, then the skin has another specific or characteristic feature that is the presence of slime glands. So these are specialized cells or the glands present in a line along uh, the lateral side of the animal body and they secrete uh, slime on their skin, right? And then for the respiration, they have seven pairs of the gills on the each side and uh, the, they lay gelatinous eggs that are aquatic in nature. Okay. And then these animals have the fins present for the swimming. There's a, a dorsal fin that is divided into two parts, anterior dorsal fin and the posterior dorsal fin. Right, so the anterior dorsal fin and posterior dorsal fin and then the again, there is a fin present on the tail uh, that goes towards the, some part of the underneath or the ventral side that is called the caudal fin. Right? They have preliminary or uh, primitive eyes which are not that simple but not very well advanced. Right, And these, these are the gill slits or gills, uh, gill pores which we discussed earlier and then they have a nostril, a single nostril to sense the chemical composition of, of the medium they are living in. Right, so mouth parts, their mouth parts are sectorial type or the sucking and rasping type mouth parts that abrase the surface of their host. Uh, in the ecology or in their habitat, these are mostly parasitic or predatory in nature, so they have to attach to their host and then they rub their skin to make a wound. From that wound, the blood uh, flows and then they suck that blood up to feed themselves. Okay, ji, is that clear, Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So, good. Okay, so when we talk about their uh, mouth parts, the mouth is uh, round, circular. Here you see that is a mouth which is circular in shape, does not have any jaw, but there are many conical teeth present within uh, the uh, inside, inside of that mouth region or inside the buccal cavity. And that buccal cavity then leads towards two openings, the uh, dorsal opening and the ventral opening. Uh, let me draw here something. If you talk about the mouth parts, this, this is the shape of the animal. Right, so the circular mouth, mouth that has teeth or the thorn-like teeth or, or conical teeth in its mouth that leads into this buccal cavity. And from the buccal cavity, there are two openings. This is the diagram here you see. This is the mouth of the animal which is attached to its host. And then they have a teeth or conical teeth. There are multiple of them. <clears throat> right, so these teeth, when are protruded out with the tongue, they rub and uh, make a wound in the animal, in their host's skin. And that blood goes into this buccal cavity. And then the buccal cavity has two openings, one on the dorsal side, that is the esophageal opening. 
that leads towards the intestine and stomach for the digestion and the second one is the respiratory opening that leads towards the pharyngeal cavity or pharyngeal basket for respiration or water circulation okay let's read these points the animals have the mouth that is ventral in position or downward oriented teeth are sharp and conical and often uh, many present in the mesodermal papillae or, or the tongue and uh, they can be replaced if they are lost then there are specialized glands present in their buccal cavity that produces the chemical compounds that works as the anticoagulant so that the blood coming from their host does not uh, dry out or coagulate on the surface and they can have a good gulp of the uh, the blood for their feeding uh, normally when they are not feeding right when the animal is not feeding they just drink water or they just engulf water through their mouth and that water moves out from the gill slits and during this cycle they exchange the gases that was the first part second part is if the animal is feeding and it is attached to the fish in that case their mouth is sealed with the surface of their uh, prey in this condition they normally take water in and out both from their uh, gill slits right so water enters from the gills from one side and leaves from the other side so that they exchange the gases yes, sir can the nostril be used for respiration too because you said that it's used for uh, checking out the chemical composition of the water yes that's right but those nostrils are not uh, functional at this point on these animals and they are not linked to the respiratory system just now uh, later on in the higher animals we will see that how the respiratory system is developed you see we are following the course of the evolution along these different phyla when we are moving towards the higher levels we see one characteristic arriving in the one animal then it is getting towards perfection and it getting attached to some other characteristics so isse pehle humne yahi dekha tha ke sensory papillae the that would be feeling that uh, or sensing the chemical composition now here these have they have the nostril but that nostril is not connected to the respiratory part it is just an empty cavity with some sensory uh, neurons within it that can sense the chemical composition so uh, now there are there is another thing to explain that since the buccal cavity leads towards the two openings so the animal can uh, regulate the flow of the blood or water to their respective paths if the animal is just uh, getting water for respiration the water would be channelized towards the ventral opening that is the respiratory opening and that that leads towards the pharyngeal cavity and then out of the body through the pharyngeal pores okay but when the animal has to feed on its prey they get attached to the animal, their host and the blood coming in the buccal cavity is channelized to the dorsal opening that is esophageal opening and from there it is channelized towards the intestine and stomach for the digestion right so the animal has uh, a control on uh, on the movement of the materials depending on the type of the liquid getting into the buccal cavity so next is the circulatory system so they have the completely uh, closed circulatory system and it is adv getting advanced here we have a well developed heart that is two chambered so one chamber receives the uh, deoxygenated blood from the whole body and then the other part other chamber pushes it towards the pharyngeal cavity for cleansing and a new thing arrives here that the blood instead of having a well developed heart they also have uh, a pericardium or a membrane for the protection of the heart and confining the heart into its place then from the heart leads the ventral aorta that passes forward towards the gills theek hai heart hai heart se fir ek vein nikalti hai that is ventral aorta on the ventral side of the animal body if you see if we think this is a heart right so this this from there a, a vein arise um, originates that moves towards the anterior side and gets near these pharyngeal slits these are pharyngeal slits theek hai this is called ventral aorta then it divides into the bronchial Uh, arteries right jaise humne pehle dekha if we see this is the bronchial region of the animal or the gills right and this is the heart 
this is the head of the animal, anterior part. So this is the heart from the heart, an artery originates that moves towards the anterior part. Dorsal artery. When it reaches in the pharyngeal region near the uh, gills, it divides into two or uh, not two. Actually, there are seven gills, so there are seven arteries arriving from these. So these are called bronchial arteries. Bronchial arteries take the blood towards the upside or the dorsal side of the animal from where it connects to the uh, another artery that is called the dorsal aorta. And from the dorsal aorta, there is a cardinal vein arriving that takes blood towards the head, and then a cardinal vein that brings the blood back towards the uh, the ventral aorta. Okay, so the head ki taraf se blood ki circulation complete ho gayi. Uh, that is pushed towards the back end of the body, and finally reaching towards the caudal vein because that is in the caudal region or the tail region. And from the caudal region, the blood is collected back and gets along the uh, subintestinal vein that runs parallel to the intestine and then finally reaches back into the heart. So that is a complete blood cycle. So if we see there are two chambered hearts, that heart is enclosed in the pericardium. Then the vein uh, originates ventral aorta, takes blood forward towards the gills. From the gills, it divides into multiple branches uh, that are known as bronchial arteries and bronchial arteries take blood towards the dorsal side and during this movement, gaseous exchange happens. From the dorsal aorta, uh, a cardinal vein or, uh, originates that supply to the head and uh, from the head that the cardinal artery takes the blood uh, vein, brings the blood back towards the dorsal aorta and then uh, that leads the blood towards the back end of the animal. There is the elementary canal and, and uh, there is a mesenteric arteries or subintestinal arteries that uh, distribute the blood to the elementary canal and the rest of the abdomen and also collects the digested food particles to distribute into the whole body. Right, so in summary here you see the, another illustration of the annual circulatory system. So do you see there is a heart here? This heart is pumping bloods in the forward direction or in the interior direction, right? For the in the interior region, these divides into the multiple branches that that are surrounded by the pharyngeal slits. So the gaseous exchange happens here, and the blood comes into the dorsal aorta, right? And the dorsal aorta, the blood in general moves in the backward direction towards the tail, but there is another branch that appears that is the cardinal artery that takes blood towards the head for for the, the oxygenation of the head tissues. And then that blood is uh, comes back towards the the dorsal aorta and moves towards the end and so on. Uh, so, excuse me, sir. Yes. So the dorsal aorta will uh, branch out into the, the mesenteric arteries? Yes, exactly. Actually, it is the same vein, but when depending upon their location and position and then their nearby tissues to which they are providing blood uh, principally, uh, they get their name changed. So once it is running along the intestine and it is on the underneath of the intestine, it is called like from here, the vein coming back to the heart might be called as subintestinal vein because it is below the intestine. Then the part of the vessel this, which is surrounding the uh, stomach that could be called as mesenteric artery or mesenteric vein because it is bringing the food from that part. So uh, when we talk about the life cycle of the lampreys, it is very uh, interesting life cycle that normally these lampreys are marine in, in their habitat, but once they have to uh, reproduce, <clears throat> they normally swim upstream, uphill and, and go to the shallow waters where the male basically collects all those stones and and uh, spread them in, in on, the, on the on the ground in the depression to make a nest the female joins later and then they spawn their uh, gametes in that uh, nest and fertilization happens externally and the neonates or their uh, larvae are totally different they do not look exactly like the lampreys they look like amphioxus right and they spend most of their life being buried in the sand or sandy sediments as uh, as the filter feeders and their life of as an immature is ranges from three to seven 
years. Right, so these animals spend most of their life span as immatures, and once they are ready to uh, mate, so they transform or metamorph into the adults where they develop their eyes. Their uh, feeding hood is replaced by those teeth uh, like structures and papillae, and then they develop the game, their gonads perfectly to, to mate, and uh, then they die. Uh, okay, so that was all about class Petromyzontia.